Adam Bazalgett here from Scratch Golf Academy. Today let's look at how to fix a slice in golf with your driver and we're going to fix it, I promise you, with some simple stuff. It will be exaggerated but not, let's say, unconventional. Show you the handshake move that's going to make the difference and at the end of the video some ideas how to blend it together and make this thing work for you. Here's our intended target line, obviously the golf ball, and let's assume reasonably solid contact as mishits can make all sorts of things happen. Here's the rule of thumb. If the club face is open or aimed to the right for the right-handed golfer at impact, it is going to slice no matter what. I just get a 50 mile an hour wind this way, maybe not. It will slice. Now you could swing more to the left of the open face and start it more to the left and slice it. You don't want to do that. So it's very difficult to get someone to effectively swing more from the inside if they're struggling with an open face because they just hit the ball worse. So we're going to emphasize getting the face square but as we go along also how to get the club coming more from here, but you cannot have the face like that or you'll have no success. Very quickly here, let's clear up a slicer's myth. People think because they slice their driver a lot and not so much their shorter irons, they make different swings. It's almost never the case. What happens, here's your golf ball, here's your club, say, putting a slice on it. When you put that stuff on it, what you really do is you tilt the golf ball this way and the ball spins on a tilted axis. Picture an airplane with a low right wing like that. So the nearer the equator you hit, the less loft, the more you can tilt it. You go under the ball with a very lofted club, the ball won't tilt much. So the driver will always curve more than the short irons with the same swing motion. So this is important. If you're going to be able to rotate the club closed through impact, you need a grip, especially with this lead hand, that is over here enough. If it's wrapped over, roughly V between thumb and forefinger at the back shoulder, you will be able to tilt it. Test yourself, put it in one hand and see if you can do that. The trail hand would match this hand, both pointed this way. When taking this lead hand grip, relax your hand. You see how the fingers curl up? Let the club go down and diagonally into that crevice at the base of the fingers. That pad must be on top of the club. But as you do it, don't stretch and try to force it. Relax, get it down here, pad on top. You should now feel really good mobility as you can push down. When you look this way, we talked about the V going more this way. That should happen naturally. You should never see these fingertips looking down. And just match the trail hand to that so that both hands are a little bit this side of vertical. So here's the key move, it's the handshake move. If I had to reach back and literally shake your hands with my lead hand, several things have to happen. My right side, my trail side has to lengthen. That's crucial to get your arms and your golf swing back here. Don't sit into that back knee. And secondly, I have to bow this wrist a little bit. That's going to further close the club face. So picture handing the golf club up or shaking hands to someone back there. You will really be setting yourself up for a much better better look. It will probably help if you get just a little bit of this sort of orientation at address as well. Hips nudge that way. A winning move for the slicer. So just a close-up, remember the left wrist is a bit cupped, pointed this way at address. If you can get the handshake look and flatten it a bit, you really turn that club face into a more closed position. We like that feeling for the slicer. All right, you'll take my word for it. Hopefully that was reasonably good. We're at the top of the backswing. Now two keys coming down. Then we're going to talk about how to blend this together and some thoughts on improvement that I think will really help you. We're here we are. We've got our reach over handshake. The club's a little bit closed. Everything's more behind me. The classic mistake, club face aside, that slicers make. They pull too hard with their trunk. They pull the club over on top of the ball. You could certainly smother one left doing that if you get the club face right, but you'd never really be good unless you can get the club coming more from the inside. So once you're back here, remember this. Okay, sure, the body has a little bit of movement. You have to get this club with the release of that trail arm to the golf ball. Good analogy would be skipping a rock. If I was doing that, I wouldn't use my body so much. I'd nudge my hips and then I'd release the rock or I'd release the golf ball. So once you're back here, Okay, a little bump, emphasize releasing that right arm, that trail arm, and you will start to get the club to the ball with more speed and more from the side of your body. Now, the next thing you have to emphasize, we've been giving you, explain the importance of the club face and the grip, we've given you a dose of shutting the club face back here. Keep 
pouring coil oil on the fire, so to speak. So when you're here, as you come down and snap that thing, snap it so the back of the lead hand and the club face are that way, and overdo it a little bit. Get here. That ball just snapped hook to the left. You need some of that. So a couple of thoughts here in conclusion as to how you can really make this work for you. Number one, adult golfers, which is most golfers, I, I teach golf every day, they're always trying to do it neutral or do it correctly. You have to play around with a variable to get good. You saw how I snap hooked that. So don't come out here at full speed and try to hit it perfectly. Try to get the feeling for doing something different and you will much more quickly get to good golf if you do that. If I had you guess a number, let's say that's in my head between one and a thousand, let's say, and let's say that number was 600, you don't know that. Your first guess, 12, no problem. I say, no, that's too low. 15, try again, 20, guess high, guess 800 and work your way back. That's the way it is with the club face and the swing. Get something on a small scale, overdo it, be playful, and work your way back to neutral, and you'll do a lot, lot better. Now, final thought, if you like this video, by the way, and I know it'll help you slice, it'll fix it if you do these things, hope you'll share it or give it a like. One final thought for you, and that is mental pictures are so much better for the subconscious mind. You have to get in front of a mirror, maybe take a little bit of time to work through these things, but if you'll go out with a little work and just say, shake the hand, skip the rock or some sort of thing like that. Give yourself nice, fluid, motion-oriented pictures instead of do this, do this, do this, and do this. You might have to work a bit to get there, but that's your goal. You will really be able to use these things. You'll play a lot better and you'll have more fun. Hope this helps you.